Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. Welcome to Terra at Home on well, the first full weekend of spring at this point and uh, we have a good show for you here today. We're going to talk about some really great baking ideas, some gluten-free baking and yes, we're going to be joining the folks here at Hottie Biscotti, also talking of course uh, about uh, spring weddings. I'm joined by Debbie Stroud and uh, you are a partner, a son, basically a mother and son team. Right. Uh, you have your uh, son back there, Lou, <laughs> and yeah. the two of you came with up this idea of uh, Hottie Biscotti. So right. how did you guys even like what happened one night you get together what you actually do? <laughs> I was um, I was an optician mm -hmm. my son was living in Korea and um, my friends and I were sitting around the the table and I was just my passion's always been baking okay I've been an optician for 35 years raising Lewis by myself and financially it was more feasible to be an optician mm -hmm. but my passion's always been baking and I started Years ago in the 80s, I started Hugs and Quiches. So I supplied, I know, silly name, corny name. Not cute names. <laughs> um, but I, um, so I supplied quiche to restaurants. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's it's always been in it's my been blood. There. Yeah, it's always you been there. You hear so much about that with people that they, you know, they have that career that they have to do financially did, for a while, yep. right? And yep. then all of a sudden, at one point in their lives, they make the switch. That's it, yeah. To do what they're really passionate about. Yeah. I, um, I, we were, my friends were sitting around the table and, and we were eating this biscotti and my friend came up with the name Hottie Biscotti. <laughs> and so I thought, you know what, because I was part time doing some baking, mm -hmm. um, for restaurants still and still working full time as an optician, I, um, I just decided to start going around to some restaurants with this, with this idea. And, um, and then in 2009, I got laid off of my optical job, and ah, I thought, okay, there you go. I think this is meant Here's to be. The message. Yeah. So my son was in Korea, and he wrote an article. Um, he wrote the editor of The Spectator and said, you know, my mom is a middle age, love that, oh. middle age, um, you know, starting her life uh, as, as a baker, mm -hmm. and I, because my son writes, can I write an article? He, he asked if he could write an article about me starting a new business. Oh. And they said, you know what, we love the idea, why don't we send a reporter over, and, um, and a photographer, and before I knew it, they were taking pictures and writing about me, so there was a big article in The Spectator, and that kind of got it started. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Good for him, yeah. though, right? You gotta kind of take that step. You, you yeah. know, it's worth asking, right? It's worth putting it out there and just seeing. Some yep. people are too afraid to do that. Yeah. So, so, um, so now we have this. So now we have this, and uh, he came back from Korea and saw the potential, mm -hmm. and um, and it just, it's still, it's, it's just, it's going really well. And it's this cute little shop. Yes, very, little, very pink little, and white. It's the, uh, the <laughs> word right there. in the heart of Westdale. <laughs> it and, is. Uh, it's, it's, we've been getting so much love from Westdale yeah. people. It's just wonderful, and we we do a lot of weddings, um, a lot of shops. Hours. Um, I mean, as you can see around here, we can really do anything. Now, I don't know if you wanted me to show some of the mm -hmm. things that we do, or is well, it? Well, you know, uh, that's the thing. Like, we, you know, it, it started off with biscotti. <coughs> so, what was your first? What was the first biscotti like? Because you, you talk about being the softer biscotti. Right, right. It, you know, it's a it's um, a family recipe, uh -huh. and it wasn't even it wasn't even biscotti. It was just a cookie at the time, okay. and we okay. decided to to turn it into a biscotti, and uh -huh. um, and just you know because in in um, in our family we would cut them in in slices like like a loaf, right. you know, from a loaf, right? And then um, and we ended up just dipping it in chocolate and then covering it in toffee and M and M's and and coconut. And then, and then the ideas and now, come, and, and right? It just, yeah, and then it just started. Like the ball started rolling mm -hmm. and rolling, and then we just started incorporating other things. And well, um, let's talk about the wedding side of things. So, okay. if, if someone or, or for showers, obviously okay. showers, weddings. I mean, we can go from baby showers and baptisms, wedding showers right. to yeah. showers. So yeah. people are looking for something different, something okay. fun that. People, well, not only is it pretty, but it actually tastes good, yeah. right? Yeah. So what would you say is your most popular? The most popular are biscotti mm -hmm. dipped. Um, Those I are pretty. Yeah, mm -hmm. this, and this is really nice. And what we can do is we can color coordinate any of the um, any of the toppings on here for different weddings. I mean, I we've got that. different M&M colors mm. that we can do. We've got yeah. about 21 different M&M colors okay. that we can top on the biscotti. Okay. And then we dip it in white chocolate or dark chocolate, and then we splash it with white or 
dark chocolate. So you we can sit can, down with someone we, and really oh, get specific we do. about exactly, exactly. the colors. Exactly. We can do ribbon have. colors, whatever their th color theme is. That's and we nice. Can, and that's what people really want these days. They want to yeah. be very personalized, right? Well, this is it. A lot of people get, you know, the little little photo um, little photo albums yes. or the little candles. And yep. what do you do with another candlestick holder? That's right. So that's this is right. something that yeah. a couple can take away and, um, and eat there. Eat yeah. 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 And, yeah. Um, and, and that's it. And that's what you so want, right? Another thing that's really popular mm -hmm. are the chocolate toffee pretzels. These are good. Those are <laughs> yummy if you like salty yeah. and sweet together. Uh -huh. And we, we can put, um, we, uh, we can even color coordinate um, the splash of the, instead of the putting the white, right. we can do a light pink or a light blue, but the toffee and the chocolate together are really, really good. Oh, so that's a great yeah. idea. Now I noticed you also have mini, tiny little mini biscotti. These mini are good as well. Are big. Yeah, yeah, they're a real hit. And they're handy too to have even at, um, say, business functions and things like that, right? Yeah, we do a lot of corporate events mm -hmm. and um, and a lot of platters. Mm -hmm. What we can do is we can put, and this is these are our snowballs. We put oh, these in the cute. middle of a platter, uh -huh. and the, this is like a shortbread with toasted almonds inside, and then we put all of our mini biscotti all around and chocolate toffee pretzels. Scenic look really pretty. We can custom, yeah, yeah we can custom yeah. anything. I and then we that. wrap it in cello with ribbon, and it looks really, really pretty. Yeah. Um, and these, too, okay, so is, what, is this a cake pop? This is decadent. Okay. This is a re like, um, kind yeah, of like a Reese's of peanut butter pop. Oh my, Dipped in, that. there's chocolate, and there's peanut butter, and there's toasted um, toasted peanuts inside. Oh, it's and like a surprise ball. It <laughs> is, and it is, and it's like a, kind of like a fudge, a peanut butter fudge ball, dipped Ooh. in chocolate, covered in chocolate. That's oh. our, our word around here. That's <laughs> chocolate. You know what? Chocolate That's everything. Key, right? So yeah. I like, now you also have these little boxes, yeah. so you can incorporate that for people to, as well. What we can do is we can, um, we can color coordinate for weddings, mm -hmm. or any, real, again, any event. Mm -hmm. um, showers are really good. We can, another thing we can do is for hotel rooms, if people, if um, brides are having hotel rooms, to have like a little, a oh, little takeaway or a little cute. gift box in sure. every hotel room. Yeah. So that's, that's nice idea. to do. I like that um, idea. And we fill it with our mini biscotti. We can fill it up with anything. Mm -hmm. um, now, what's your lead time for, for orders in general? We usually like, if we can get at least a month for okay. weddings. But yeah. you know what? We are so easy to get along with. Mm -hmm. It's my, my son and I can, we adapt And to you guys anything. are pretty hilarious, just the two of you. Uh, <laughs> so you, I mean, you guys do, you, you really, you're hands on in this so that yeah. you make sure the quality is there, you take care of this product. And uh, yeah. I can imagine when you're dealing with uh, big weddings and things like that, you need that lead time because- we, Yeah, we do. We got a tiny little place here and you're putting out some good stuff. Yeah, we, um, we're, we're really, we, we work well together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and we just, I'm sorry, go ahead. What would you say is your busiest time of year? <laughs> Christmas was insane. Yeah. Yeah. It now was you guys, now what, what, when did you start? When was your opening day? Okay, good. Go. We are coming up with our one year anniversary. Uh -huh. um, last April 2nd, we uh -huh. opened <gasps> this year, April, um, March 31st on okay. Saturday. We're having our Very good. kind of our one year anniversary and we're going to be giving some samples and giving some large biscotti out to everybody. So it's going to be fun. So just next week, and yeah. uh, just around the corner, yeah. everyone can celebrate with you. So yeah. we thank you so much for letting us in your cute little place thank here. You. And uh, we hope people come by. Can I just say, uh, please yeah. like us on Facebook, yeah. Twitter, uh, www.hottybiscotti.com. Perfect. And that's thank it. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank very you, much. Debbie. And thank you, Lou. Way back there, cooking away. We're having fun here again in West Dell. Be back with more Tara at home. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Tara at Home. Now we're moving on to, well, we can continue to eat sweets even if you are gluten free. We're here with Rhonda Barr, the owner of You'd Never Know. And I remember when you were in your tiny little place and I used to try to tell everybody where you were in uh, downtown Dundas. You're still in Dundas, but you're in this beautiful place, bright windows and uh, great location because your business is booming. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. yeah. We've got I mean, windows. Yeah, you have windows. You have light. This is wonderful. Yeah. And the great part about this is it is a completely gluten-free bakery. 
100% gluten free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no gluten in this building. Mm -hmm. uh, but as the name says, you never know. It tastes normal. And that's normal. the greatest part because a lot of people nowadays are eating gluten free that don't even need to. Exactly. Well, right. A ton. You know right. what? A big percentage of the population are going that way. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is today's wheat has 90% more gluten than back in the day. It, wow. Geneticists have been modifying that product for over 50 years, mm -hmm. and it's considered right now it's a dwarf wheat. So um, what happens is that it grows a lot faster, so the farmers get to have more crops, and uh, of course, right? That's yeah. the way everything seems to be going. Right? But it's, everything's but the morphed. It, 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 it is, and, and it's actually it's called a dwarf wheat, is what it's called. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's pretty toxic, and we're seeing a lot of it. We're seeing a lot of people by choice doing it, mm -hmm. uh, but also by allergy. Uh, yeah. You could be uh, wheat intolerant, you could be gluten intolerant, um, many different things, but it's just seeming to be a better way to eat. And more and more people are, are, are you know, becoming diagnosed with either celiac disease, or as you say, or just an intolerance in general. Correct. So it, it just gives you that bloated, uncomfortable feeling. Those are kind of the first signs, right? People uh, start to you know what? All it, kinds of things, Yeah, right? it's, it's not necessarily the first yeah. sign. There ah. are so, there's so many guises that it comes out that you might be intolerant mm -hmm. that it's really quite hard to actually diagnose uh, ah, in North tough. America, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, the, what they say is it takes up to about 10 years in North America for diagnosis. And what I'm finding is people now are taking charge of their lives themselves and they're saying, I want a health team. So what they're doing is they're taking their medical side, the doctors, mm -hmm. they're also going naturopath. And yes. they're going both sides and they're saying, what's best for me? Now, the mm -hmm. naturopath doctors tend to be telling their patients, no matter what their ailment might be, is get off gluten get off gluten now. Mm -hmm. So I mean they're my friends, it's great. That's, well, that's one of the first things you do here is when the people are trying to sort of diagnose maybe some of their issues or again as you say even before they have issues let's just strip you down. That's one of the first things they do is exactly. take you off that. Yeah. And uh, and then you can kind of sort of see you know where you where you can incorporate any of that into your diet if not any at all right. So that's where it comes here. I mean people can come in here and literally kind of have an entire meal. It's not just about the desserts. No, no, you it's not. You have pastas, you have sausage rolls, so you can you can have full meals, pies. You want mainstream. Um, mm -hmm. What happens, especially when people are diagnosed, and for myself, I feel today, even today, a lot of women are the, the home body cook. So even if they're working full time, they come home, they have to cook. Yes. So say they have celiac, say it's the husband, the child, whomever it might be, now they're cooking two ways. Uh, and that really sucks. I mean, nobody wants to do that. Right. So if you could teach them how to cook one way, one mm -hmm. way only, for the mm -hmm. whole family, they're not going to know. And what we have in our bakery, same thing. You can have a dinner party, buy all this stuff. People aren't going to know it's gluten free. See, and that makes it so much easier for people because before, people used to really kind of freak out when they heard, okay, here, have this you know, cookie, have this piece of bread. Oh, I know. It's gluten free. They're like, I don't think so, right? They, yeah. it just, and, and really, I mean, it used to taste pretty bad. Uh, you know, some still, of them were yeah. There's still a lot of product out there that's not so great, and no. I think probably what the problem is is back in the day when the, this first started coming around, such a small percentage of society was being diagnosed, and they had to sustain themselves. So some people looked at it and said, you know what, we'll make food for this. Sure. Doesn't matter, but it was all frozen, nothing fresh. That's right. That's what I've always seen. Yeah, when you go to frozen. the natural stores, that's mm -hmm. what you would see. It was frozen because it doesn't last for very long, right? No, no, no. four days for our bread. Yeah. Uh, so what you're looking at is more people like myself are popping up and mm -hmm. we're giving you alternatives. So sure. you can walk into my bakery and I mean if I didn't have gluten written anywhere or gluten free written anywhere here, yeah. you're not going to know. And that's no, the thing. Honestly, well you not. wouldn't and yeah. people would, it would catch people and but that's fine, right? Yeah, I mean because exactly. you can eat it and it doesn't, it, you have pizza. Yeah, we do, we do. I love that. It's great mean, pizza, thin crust. <laughs> yeah, that's right yeah. and it looks good and so that's, that's the thing. So uh, people again are, are taking care of their health as you say maybe taking the step forward and and you can just approach it by having all of this yeah and uh, and also share with your family and friends and no one will know the difference except keep in mind one thing because people will come in sometimes that choose this diet for mm -hmm. they think health reasons they want to lose weight yeah and it's hilarious because you know what a piece of cake's a piece of cake <laughs> a cupcake's <laughs> a cupcake <laughs> That's true. it doesn't matter so yeah, yeah you have yeah. to watch that again we're just removing uh, those, those glutens all right? we're doing so. is removing the gluten yeah. okay so one big thing magical about it is the flowers that you guys have created and that's where your secret is that yeah. you've created a great great dough or a great pastry that isn't heavy and isn't binding and it has like a kind of a nice sort of lightness to it which is a lot of times some of the gluten products are very heavy yeah, so you're getting true. away from some of that because of this blend that you've created mm -hmm. right so you also have different types of flowers that you make available for people as well I do we have an all-purpose blend which uh, mm -hmm. cup for cup you can actually use uh, which one is that one here yeah mm -hmm. uh, cup for cup you can actually 
use a regular old recipe, mm -hmm. and you're not going to know it's gluten free. It, you can make muffins, cookies, any type of thing like that, which is pretty awesome. Wow. Um, I always say, like, if you're going to take this on, what you're going to do is you're going to put one teaspoon of vinegar into your liquid measure. Uh -huh. It gives it a little bit more of a bump again. Okay. And it's just, okay. a, you've lost texture. When you do gluten-free yeah. baking, you totally lost texture. How do I bring right. it back? And that's, so. that was so that you have the secrets. I mean, you were saying that, I mean, this is taking you years to kind of figure out the magic sort of system, yeah. right? Yeah, quite uh, a while. It, it's, 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 not, it's not that easy, so. It, it's not, but you know what? Don't be afraid, you can try. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say never, if you're going to try to blend your own flours, mm -hmm. don't uh, buy a lot. Buy mm -hmm. little amounts, because you will have a lot of waste for sure. For sure, uh, okay. but if you okay. don't want to do it, come buy ours. Uh, we have we've perfected this one, and it's fantastic. We See, get huge great. feedback. Our cake and pastry is more for the the cake, the pastry, yeah, of course. Sure. This year with that blend here at mm -hmm. Christmas time, I did the uh, shortbread cookies, oh. killer recipe, which I I'm giving out anyway, and uh -huh. I use brown sugar in it. Mm -hmm. With this recipe here mm -hmm. was a, a Scottish shortbread, the thicker kind. <gasps> Melt in your mouth to die for. Yeah, I really love good. Shortbread. I'll come by next yeah. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is uh, some of your top sellers? When it comes um, to the, uh, someone who, who, you know, has to get gluten free and they're coming in and they're just loving this because they're like, wow, thank you so much for making this happen. Yeah, for me. well, our uh, pasta is a big thing, for mm -hmm. sure. Our pasta is huge. I uh, bet. We, we actually sell the pasta already made if you want to buy lasagna straight up mm -hmm. or for the home cooks that want to make their own, we crank our noodles here ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this is actually all starch. This one took me four months to figure out. This wow. was a hard one to do. I kept doing it's like it. It's chemistry. And, well, it is because you, you boil the water and it would blow up in the water. Oh. I was like, oh crap, so start over again, right? <laughs> but no, this is really. Experimenting yeah, in the kitchen. This is a big seller. Um, our pastry shells, you can mm -hmm. buy our shells and make your own pastry if you nice. want your, your own pies, pies or buy our pies finished. Easy. Uh, granola, as far as, yeah, uh, granola is fantastic. We yeah. do. We use quinoa on that, and that's another thing. You know, with celiacs, you've got to be super careful. Um, when you stop eating wheat, you don't realize how much protein and how much fiber you've lost. So you gotta bring it back in your diet. Uh, and you gotta be really smart on the grains that you're gonna choose to replace it with. Okay. Uh, quinoa is an ancient grain. It's from the Andes. It's fantastic. It's got um, complete protein, 100% complete protein. Yes, it's a good one for you. All yeah. on its own, uh, high in fiber, high in uh, protein and fiber both, yeah. Very good, very mm -hmm. well good, and good, good information too. So you can help people out when they come in the store and guide them along. We have a sideline on it, we do diet. nutrition on the side, yeah. Very good, well yeah. thank you so much again, Rhonda, we appreciate it, and again, right down here, right down, 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 awesome and location, uh, perfect right? locations, yeah. you can come by, and you'd never know, That's it, it tastes good, so all of us can eat it. We'll be back with more Tara at home after this. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. to Tara at home and we're now in the Tara kitchen we're here with chef Rachel mm -hmm. and we've been talking about kind of the baking theme throughout the course of the day just left of course gluten-free baking now we're just back to chocolate decadence yes and I think it's because you know I like chocolate right yes of just course favor. <laughs> <laughs> all right so what are we making today today we're making a chocolate pot de creme okay okay so um, low calorie mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. okay. Anything involving chocolate, just go for it, right? We're just going to get this started because this needs a little bit of time yes. to melt. So we have uh, some whipping cream here. Mm -hmm. So in a pot, the whipping cream, some milk. So this is about a cup of whipping cream, okay. um, a cup and a half of milk, and our chocolate. So mix that all together. Set it on a medium uh, low heat. Mm -hmm. Whisk mm -hmm. it constantly. And basically, we just want all these chocolate pieces to melt. Now it's really easy to burn milk and burn chocolate, isn't it? So you have to be really careful, right? Yes. And it just tastes bad. If I could pass that yeah, over to sure. you. Now what kind of chocolate are you using? This is just a semi-sweet chocolate, okay. semi-sweet baking chocolate. Okay. Um, any chocolate that's semi-sweet will do. It's, yeah, it just gives it a little bit, you don't want to go too mild on the chocolate, but you know, it just gives it more depth to the flavor, right? Right. Yeah. If you were to use a, uh, like a milk chocolate, I find that it might be too sweet yes. for this type of dessert. Yep. I so semi-sweet or 
maybe even unsweetened because we are going to put a little bit of sugar in. Okay. Uh, right, and you don't want this mixture to boil. Okay. So we want to just be whisking it, whisking it constantly, I should say, or stirring it constantly over a You have to be so patient, right? Because you do, you have a tendency to want to turn the heat up on something like this just to get it done. Right, <laughs> right. Not a good idea. Especially in this kind of a situation. But anyways, mm -hmm. we've got that going now, so we can just leave that for a minute. Okay. And we'll get back to it. So uh, pot de creme is basically um, a pot of cream or mm -hmm. a pot of custard. Okay. So essentially we're making a chocolate custard here. Very few ingredients, mm -hmm. simple to do. Once, uh, once that's done, we'll mix it in with this mixture, but we have six egg yolks here. Okay, Kay. so it's the separation of the egg yolks. Yeah, um, keep the whites aside, make an omelet or something yeah, out of that sure. if you can, and then mm -hmm. you can get use out of that. Okay. So we'll whisk the yolks uh, with about a quarter cup of sugar. Mm -hmm. And again, this is one of those those dishes that you can make ahead as well, right? You could make these pots of creams and have them ready to go. Of so course. if you were having people over, it's like an instant dessert. You just kind of let me be fancy it up before you serve it in. Yeah. And that's what's great about it. Uh, yeah, you're right. This is actually a dessert that you have to make ahead of yeah. time. Um, because after we cook it, we want to put it in the fridge and let it and cool. Let it oh, that makes yeah. it so much easier. So, I, you know, they're always trying to say, you know, when you're entertaining people, you don't want to be spending the whole time in the kitchen. It really is hard not to. Mm -hmm. um, so this takes at least that step away. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can, uh, yeah, finish it off. Or you hire off. someone like you to come in and do the entire dinner for them. Sure. <laughs> and I like that idea. That's a <laughs> way better idea. Then you don't have idea. to worry about it at then all. Then you can just go in and party with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Make sure that's all mixed together. When okay. we pour the hot mixture in too, it'll, it'll dissolve the sugar a bit more. We can add a little bit of uh, vanilla extract there as well. Mm -hmm. There we go. So basically, um, now just the waiting game. We want to melt this all. Once you can see that the chocolate has, has mm -hmm. melted, so you're um, trying to really get that so that is completely all blended 100% before you add the eggs, right? Right. Or are you, so you were adding it to the eggs or the eggs to it? We're going to add this to the egg mixture. Okay. okay. <clears throat> um, we are going to slowly incorporate it. Yeah, because that's the one thing um, I know sometimes people have mentioned that when you're adding something to eggs, you have to make sure that you don't cook the egg, right? Right. So, so how are you going to achieve that by adding something that's hot? Right, so we call it tempering. Okay. Okay, and basically um, the only way to avoid cooking the eggs is just to add a little bit at a time. Okay. So a touch in here, whisk Stir. it up really well. Mm -hmm. A touch. Once you've added maybe uh, a quarter or half of this, you're you're tempering it in. So you're bringing this up right. to the up to the warm temperature. Mm -hmm. um, no risk of cooking that anymore. And then at that point, you're you can okay just pour. Okay. You can just pour the rest in there. Mm -hmm. Now, once it's in that bowl too, mm -hmm. um, we can strain the whole mixture through a fine uh, oh, strainer. Do you? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. so we can strain it again, and I like to put it in just a little jug like that, which makes it easy to pour oh, into our ramekins after. That's smart. Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. yes, when we strain it, then any chocolate that maybe didn't melt right or mm -hmm. any lumps that we may have at that time. Uh, well, that's good. Get caught that's, in there. That's what makes it so nice and smooth and creamy afterwards. Okay, I didn't mm -hmm. know that you did that stage. That's good. Right, so we're getting there. Okay. Uh, we can probably st start mixing this in a moment. Okay. Oh, gosh. Well, that's okay. Make a mess. Happens in everyone's kitchen. <laughs> you can see Especially my kitchen when mine. I'm baking. It's disastrous. <laughs> Even the cat's covered in flour. <laughs> I'm telling you, it happens. But then I clean up afterwards and everyone likes what they're eating, so it's all good. Yeah, exactly. Well, I... I tend to make a little bit of a mess too, but I like to clean as I go, so yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's better to do it that way, I think. Okay, so I think this is pretty much melted. Now we just okay. have a, you know, a chocolatey mixture here. Perfect. Um, I'm using my spatula so I can see, but anything that that doesn't get melted will be strained through. Okay. So put that to the side, and then I'll explain the the hot water bath after as well. Okay. So. I said just a little bit at a time. Whisk it up. And then our garnish is going to be uh, whipped cream. So we're going to whip up our own cream. Oh, awesome. um, and some chocolate shaving. So I'll, I'll show you how to shave some chocolate off. Okay. Um, when we're going to garnish it for okay. a nice presentation. 
So now that most of this is added in, mm -hmm. it's still liquid. We don't have any scrambled eggs <laughs> we here. We're good. That would just not be good. Then I'm we can thinking. add the rest of it in there. Okay. So oh yeah, so I can see what you mean how there's still be like those little bits of impurities that you can just again do what you need to do to right. So get it out of there. There we go. So that's done. Now oh, we can it smells like hot drain it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does smell good. You could probably well mm -hmm. maybe not with the raw eggs in there, but I was gonna say we could have a drink. <laughs> yeah, I know that would be yeah uh, that would be good. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to head off to break, and as we continue to strain that, we'll come back and we'll finish this up mm -hmm. and uh, make it look pretty. And, uh, of course, we have to chill it before we can eat it, but we'll get there. That's something we get to do, not you. We'll be back with more <laughs> Tara at home in just a bit. Come and explore the new Terra, where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Tara at Home, and we're continuing, well, we're finishing up our mm -hmm. pot de cremes, and uh, so you have them already chilled, so we should remind right. people where we were at when we left. Right, before break. so we were pouring them in, pouring the mixture into the ramekins, mm -hmm. so you want to put these into like a deep dish, uh, fill, fill the dish up halfway, so it comes up halfway on the on the little ramekins, mm -hmm. right, with some hot water, cover it in foil, and essentially we're steaming these in okay. the oven, yeah. basically. So 325 for about 45 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Take them out, let them cool a bit on the counter, and then you can put them in the fridge. Okay. So they need they need probably at least three hours in the fridge, but again, up to overnight or a day that. or so. Okay. Yeah. And then we've whipped up some cream here with a little bit of sugar, and I'm just going to show you my chocolate trick. Mm -hmm. So any um, you know plain bar of chocolate, milk, dark, whatever you like, and you you just get your knife and pull back. So okay. you're shaving the chocolate, basically. Okay. And then you come out with these little curls, and you can oh. use those to garnish. And that just makes it look extra special. Fancy. <laughs> fancy so we'll fancy. put a little dollop of whipped cream on each of these, and we'll top it with some chocolate. And then you can try some. Perfect. There we go. And you can, I mean, there's so many different variations of pot mm -hmm. creme, adding in you know, different flavors. Oh, that's or right, because yeah, I've, I've had one before when it's been a raspberry chocolate, mm -hmm. so that is actually, that's a really nice way of doing it. I'll see, look how nice Well, yeah, you looks. can garnish with berries, too. That would be a nice, sure uh, yeah. a nice yeah. finish as well. You have to be really careful how you're handing that chocolate, right, because it melts so easily. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can put a couple shavings on, any way you like. And, and so you basically, go. you're doing this final sort of uh, right, just before you serve it. Right. So you'll keep them in the fridge up until before serving. Yeah. So they're cold and chilled while you're serving, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Good. And do this right before you're ready to serve. Perfect. And again, you can always find our recipes at terragreenhouses.com. All of Rachel's recipes are on there. And uh, again, you can continue to watch us on Saturday mornings, bright and early. We'll see you again. Thanks for joining us. Come join our colorful team at Terra. Colored lids. 